Welcome to On The Chain. So Paul Graywall, he's the chief counsel for Coinbase, put this out. Um, this was the other day. Um, Coinbase filed their answer, noticed intent to file a motion to dismiss the SEC um, case against us. You can read our response for yourself. Our arguments speak for themselves. He went on to say that we welcome um, dialogue anytime with any regulator, including the SEC. And I believe new legislation and rulemaking is the right path forward. But the claims in this case go far beyond existing law and should be dismissed. And right there is like, that's right there. And this is really amazing because he says it should go, uh, the case goes on beyond existing law. That's a reach, right? Reaching, making stuff mean something that doesn't mean anything. Exactly. You know, above, above and beyond the law. Yeah. And this is kind of what the, this reaching, right, Jeff? So let's talk about like wh where, where are they going wrong with, with this massive uh, attack on all these organizations? But they're doing it on purpose, of, right? Of because they're, they're trying, they're trying to establish some sort of a precedent, even if it goes beyond the reach of the law, right? We're starting to see things get reversed. Look at what happened with the whole student loan thing. It has to go to the Supreme Court. Again, we have an out of control administration and an out of control group of unelected bureaucrats that don't give a shit about your individual liberties or your individual rights. Therefore, they will do whatever they please and they'll try to create law, uh, which then gets unwound because it goes to the Supreme Court or it goes to higher court. Uh, and this is this is how they they uh, have decided uh, to lead. They want to lead through enforcement. So it's not it's not unique that Gary Gensler has this attitude because it's systemic. It's a systemic cancer that it impacts is. all aspects. There's tentacles reaching out everywhere. Jeremy Hogan says that um he, he weighed on this as well. Coinbase filed this 177-page response to the SEC lawsuit. And he said, what jumped out to me is how Coinbase uses information and experience from the Ripple case. See him in email reference below. And also throws in some new stuff, the major questions doctrine, which we've talked about, which the major questions doctrine is all about this whole idea of what you know where, where can you draw the line right where can you expand on and where th this is the whole um I'm trying to like put down the words but and he says very nicey i think he meant very nicey which is a good thing but he talks about it talks about it here let me put this here there it is Colonial digital assets americans presumable congress intends major policy decisions itself not to leave those decisions to agencies, which goes, you know, kind of like butts head against that major questions doctrine where, and I think that will be overarching and probably it's going to be a big decider in a lot of these cases, which we saw this past week. Um, the, the SCOTUS Supreme Court of the United States came out with some rulings, Jeff, and people were mad because, uh, let's not get into that. It's a whole big thing. But anyway, uh, the chair against those May 2021 testimony reflected, uh, let's see, the Coinbase purchaser. To do the, anyway, this is too much to read, Jeff. I mean, it's a lot. Lost in, it's just too much. I don't even want to, it's, I hate these, uh, these, these legal documents. There's, there's a power struggle across the board. Um, think about within Congress, within the house anyways, every two years they have to get reelected. So it is a big deal. They they just have to start doing what's right for the uh, for the people, and that's the and that's the differentiator. But that's all over the world. You know, you want your elected officials to do what's right. Uh, parliamentary uh, system is drastically different uh, than our system over here, and you can see the outcome as well uh, between the two. So it's you can, um, yeah. yeah. But I wanted that's all to understand that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's good stuff. So um, I wanted to just kind of review the, the major questions doctrine. So the principle of statutory interpretation in the U.S. administrative law, which states the courts will presume that Congress does not delegate executive agencies issues of major or political of economic significance. In this case, we think about um, economic significance when it directly affects the the infrastructure of the U.S., like what we have with crypto, having all of these organizations moving offshore 
And so this is what it comes down to is like these hot beds of like whether it's a real heavy political thing. In this case, it's an economic one. And um, it's a seminal statement of the a major questions doctrine comes from the FDA versus Brown and Williamson's Tobacco Corporation in 2000. You must be guided to a degree uh, by common sense, by the manner in which Congress is likely to delegate a policy decision to which of such economic and political magnitude to an administrative agency. We also saw this come down in the EPA, um, this, uh, West Virginia versus EPA, where in that particular one, the EPA was starting to mandate laws or enforce um, rule sets. They were coming out with new rule sets that they don't have the authority to do. So they were inventing stuff that Congress never gave them the authority to. And that was struck down about a year, a little over a year ago. I think it was last, maybe it was last July. And so the reason I'm bringing up this whole major questions doctrine is because John Deaton, the uh, the man, the myth, the hero, chimed in on this. And he said that he believes Coinbase motion to dismiss based on the major questions doctrine has real teeth. I'm not saying that it'll be granted for sure, but I'm just saying it's not your garden variety motion to dismiss where denial can easily be predicted. The motion has teeth because of the following. It gets into a couple of things here, Jeff. Uh, first of all, Congress is initiating legislation, demonstrating its intent to legislate late this major questions issue. Number two, the Hinman emails discuss the regulatory gap and a greater confusion to the market. Number three, Gensler's original acknowledgement that there is no existing regulatory framework for digital assets. Number four, the fact that there isn't a single case in history, in history, Jeff, that has found a secondary sale of an investment contract to also be an investment contract. In fact, this one, this one, the one case that is involved in secondary sale found that it wasn't. So they're going way, way, way outside and reaching. Number five, there isn't a single case in history where the courts have found an investment contract when there exists no privity between the issuer slash promoter and the buyer. And number six, the Supreme Court's decision in West Virginia versus EPA, which I just brought up. Uh, it also depends on the preposition, uh, predisposition of the district court judge, Catherine Polk Falia. All I know is about Judge Falia is that she was appointed by President Obama from reading um, what Meta Law put up several a thread several weeks ago. Um, and of course, Meta Law is uh, what is he going to buy? Yeah. I don't know. Is it's Vanderbilt Law is a is a pretty good attorney puts good stuff out there. He said that alone gives us no insight in how she will rule, but I. Do see an interlocutory appeal coming in the near future, Jeff? What are you? What are your thoughts about John Deaton weighing in here? Man, well, you know, I think that you know overall, again, you know, it goes back to complete overreach on on all sides. Um, there's there's got to be an appeal, you know, process going through this as well. And I'm looking at some of the other things that John Deaton has been commenting on, and and really from the the point that you brought up in the beginning which was the the news, uh, the article here, um, SEC says that spot Bitcoin ETF filings are inadequate. Uh, and, you know, looking at just the, the entire, you know, uh, ju just everything that's happening right now, everything in its entirety, you know, you can't look at any one little thing. It just seems that across the board, um, there is an agenda and it doesn't matter what is being done. It doesn't matter how it's being done. Um, the, the pockets of the government are extremely deep, which is why they're able to go after company after company after company uh, with these lawsuits. So how many lawsuits have been stacking up? You know, it's it's amazing to me um, what what's going on right now. Uh, and soon with this whole with a B Bitcoin ETF filings, uh, you know, what is what's the, the next? You know, so you have grayscale uh, lawsuits going on. You have. You know, you still have the library lawsuit. You have the Ripple lawsuit. Now you have the Kraken. Uh, there's going to be a lawsuit there. You have Coinbase. These things are stacking up back to back. How many hundreds of millions of dollars of taxpayer money is currently being spent by this SEC uh, for what for what outcome? For what purpose? Uh, do they even have the authority to do it? So if all of this is going to be undone, at a higher court and they're, they're going to end up finding that the sec didn't even have jurisdiction to begin with because gary's a nut job and this is you know th this is 
you, you know, this is really, you know, the, the crux of the issue uh, is that it will be undone. Are you down with OTC? Please like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified when the next video drops.